I now turn to the key property of determinants in relation to inverse matrices. So I will prove the theorem that an n times n matrix is invertible precisely when a determinant is non equal to zero. So actually, we may use a determinant as a recipe to to tell whether a matrix is invertible, yes or no. Well, a proof of this statement, well, we know that A is invertible precisely when the reduced row echelon form of A is the identity matrix. So how did, did we get at the, 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 the reduced row echelon form? Well, we performed Gauss-Jordan elimination steps. And these Gauss-Jordan elimination steps have their impact if they change sign if we have S times a row swap. And uh, if we use a row multiplication by scalars, and what we obtain is the determinant of A. So any row swap changes the sign of the determinant. Yeah, so the sign is governed by the number of row swaps. And we use the 1 over ki as a means to normalize, to get at a pivot in a row. So we use also scalar multiplication of rows. And we know that scalar multiplication of a row if we multiply it by k times a row, then what we get is k times the determinant of the new matrix. So these are actually the things that have an impact in Gauss-Jordan elimination steps. So the determinant of A now equals minus 1 to the power S times k1, k2 to kp times the determinant of the row reduced echelon form. Well, the, the row reduced echelon form is a special upper triangular matrix. Yes, it's the identity. So the identity matrix has determinant 1, since it's the product of the diagonal elements, and which is 1. So the determinant of A is no more than 1 minus 1 to the power s times these uh, things that we use to multiply the rows. But we have one thing, in Gauss-Jordan elimination steps, we were only allowed to multiply by ki if ki were non-zero. So actually the number we have here is non-zero. So this, this is a proof of the theorem. Because we also know that if the determinant is zero, this means that actually the reduced row echelon form, the row, the row reduced row echelon form, has a zero on the diagonal. So we, what we see is that we, if we have a, a zero row, then any pattern and a reduced row echelon form will be zero because we have to pick an element from this row. So if the determinant equals zero, then A is not a variable.